What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to a video concerning the Fazbear Frights graphic novel collection number one. We're going to be looking at some of the new hidden details that I found in Into the Pit, and it's some very big, interesting stuff. Before we get into that, however, make sure that you like the video if you enjoy it, and subscribe to the channel to see breakdowns of other stories in this graphic novel series. On the first panel in the background, we actually have some desert scenery with cacti. And interestingly, I looked it up and there are only six US states where cacti are abundant. One of these happens to be Utah. And if I'm being honest, it makes a lot of sense for this to be Utah. Uh, especially if this is depicting the missing children's incident. Utah first came from the novel trilogy, of course, and reappeared in FNAF 6. It seems like this might be William's hometown, or at least home to some of the greatest Fazbear Entertainment incidents of all time. One cool part of this graphic adaptation of the story is we got to see Zendralix versus Mecha Zendralix, where Mecha Zendralix is literally an endoskeleton. Now in Into the Pit, Oswald does actually mention how Zendralix looks a little bit like the skeletons of the animatronic animals that he was drawing. And here he asks how a guy in a costume could be scary, of course, foreshadowing the rest of the story. And looking at Oswald's drawings, they aren't completely accurate, especially seeing that that's more like Toy Bonnie than Bonnie Bonnie. Here's my question though, which is probably just an oversight. Why does Oswald have a weird Bonnie toy on his bedstand table when he isn't even aware of the existence of Freddy's? I have a similar question for what's on the TV. It sure looks a lot like Freddy. Okay, let's get to the first of the insanely cool details that we were given. Oswald mentions uh, how Zendrelix 2020 had just come out. How could that be if the story was in 2015 like we all first thought? Now we thought that it would be in 2015 because of two things. In Back to the Future, which is mentioned in the story, they travel 30 years from 1985 to 1955, so it would make sense for that to be a clue that they travelled back 30 years in time. But ultimately, we thought this because in the Stitch Race Stingers, the ball pit had one person's blood from 30 different years. We all thought that this was Oswald's blood at first, but it clearly wasn't. That means that these 30 years don't have to start from 1985. They started when Eleanor began doing her malicious intentions. Therefore, 2020 sounds like a good, if not more fitting year than 2015. And it's kind of crazy how we've gotten that sort of confirmation in a graphic novel adaptation of the story. In the ball pit world, Mike asks Oswald if anyone ever calls him Oz, like the Wizard of Oz. It's funny because <laughs> in my Into the Pit breakdown video that I did a while ago, I made connections to the Wizard of Oz, especially with Oswald directly quoting it but I never picked up on the fact that his nickname literally is Oz. So thank you, Mike, for letting me know and, and calling it out blatantly for me. Now, here's the other huge detail that I want to share with you today. In this panel, it appears that a man is calling for his daughter by the name of Susie. This is quite big because it shows a huge connection with the missing children's incident. And if this was intended to be here by Scott, I'd say it's absolute confirmation that the MCI happens in 1985. As you are likely aware, there are six dead kids in this story while there are five in the games. Remember though that Oswald is experiencing a memory from his dad probably, and there is bound to be some distortion. Let me know what exactly you think about all of that. I think that we got two huge details in this graphic novel adaptation of this story and that they aren't to be ignored. But do you agree? Should we just ignore these details? Are they coincidences or can we actually use them for theorizing and for extra details? Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed and I'll see you in another video. Goodbye.